Hi guys, Debbie here. Today we're going to be doing a further two looks with the Kaleidos Makeup X and Yellow Canique Base Club Nebula Palette. This beautiful palette here. I've done two videos so far with this palette. I've done a first impressions and I've done a Valentine's two looks where I did a romantic red look and then a bit more of a gothy anti-Valentine's look. But I wanted to play with it some more and you guys seemed interested to see more looks with it. I'm finding it a very inspiring palette to play with so I wanted to do that and also the restock for the palette is happening on the 17th of February so hopefully this video will go up just in time to help you make up your mind if you're on the fence about picking it up but also give you some inspiration if you've already got it so without further ado let's jump into it and create the first of my two looks which is what I'm wearing on my eyes right now with the Kaleidos Maker X Aniela Canique Base Club Nebula Palette. Okay guys, before we get into the video, just a little bit about me. I'm Debbie, I'm 52, I do colourful makeup on my channel, and I'm here to show you that whatever your age, the only barrier to creating a makeup look is your imagination, and that age plays no part in that process. So just want you to let that sink in for a moment. You can do whatever you want with your makeup, whatever age you are. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And that's what my channel is all about. So if you're down with that and you're not yet subscribed, I would love to have you. But let's jump right into the first look. I'm going to zoom you in a bit closer and we're going to create the look that I'm wearing on my eyes right now. Okay guys, for the first look I want to keep things very mauve, so we're going to be using Rock Copper, Nehru, You're My Only Hope, and probably adding a little bit of Cylon just to deepen things up in the outer corner. So I'm going to start with Nehru and I'm going to put that through my crease, and for both of the looks today I'm going to be using the Matte Painterly Paint Pot, it's what I normally use and I thought I wouldn't keep showing that on camera because it just makes the video longer and I think everyone knows how to apply eyeshadow primer so, so I'm not going to do that on camera for these looks. I don't normally go in with my lightest transition first but just decided to do it this way because I want to get a really nice blended effect in the crease and sometimes it's easier to go in with the lightest shade first and I love the tones of this actually it's got that mauvey tone in the pat and I thought it looked a bit kind of more taupe than this but it has got a mauve leaning kind of tone on me I've got a very pinky tone to my skin though so I'm really liking the tone I'm gonna take that under my eyes as well quite honestly this could be a one and done look you could just stop here just put a little bit of shimmer on the lids and you'd be good to go but of course we're not going to be doing that on this channel because <laughs> I like to play and uh, get a little bit creative. I really wanted to blow this out as much as possible. Perhaps even want to go a little bit higher than I've gone actually. I've got a lot of space between my lids and my brows so if I don't fill it, it ends up with quite a gap there. So I'll probably take my shadows a little bit higher than, than a lot of people do just to fill that area. Not complaining because I'm very lucky to have that. That is blending out super easily and I love the tones of that. Now I want to build some intensity with rock copper. Really sink those eyes back and bring my lids more prominent. Okay and I'm taking that shade on the lower lash line as well. I am going to be going for a big wing with this look but sometimes when I'm doing a winged out look I like to have a rounded eyeshadow shape so I can then bring the wing extended out of the eyeshadow. That's what we're doing here but I do just want to lift this outer corner just a little bit. Make sure I've got enough shadow in this outer corner to really peek through that wing. Love how this shadow is building. It's got that grazy tone to it. All about it. I'm going to take a bit of the narrow shade to help with the blend in this outer corner. Go back in with the original brush because that is better for blending. Oh, I love the drama in this. Can't believe it's just two eyeshadows and it's looking this dramatic already. I'm going to take a touch of Cylon and pack that in the outer V, literally in the outer corner. I 
He's next to that rock hopper shade. It's not that much deeper. It's just a more pinkier tone, I think. In the inner part of my lids, I'm going in with seven of nine. And I'm just gonna pack that in the space where we have no shadow at the moment. Doing this because I want to give myself a base for that You're My Only Hope shade because it is a topper shade with quite a transparent base so I want to make sure we've got something underneath it but I think it will also add quite a bit of interest to the look as well. They're a nice combination together. Oh, I'm not doing anything special here, just packing. I'm using a very small packing brush to try and keep things as controlled as I can so it doesn't go too much on my lower lash line, although it has a little bit on that side. I'll cover that when we work on the lower lash line some more. I haven't really used this shade too much in a look, so really wanted to, and I think it looks really, really pretty as well. I bring it just a little bit higher into my crease. As I say, I've got quite a lot of space to fill, so just gonna work on blending that a little bit into the shades that are already there. And I don't mind if it's not perfectly blended because I'm more about the colour combos than the perfect blend, as you know if you've been here before. Now I'm just going to go back in with the original blending brush that's got the Naru shade on it, just to kind of grunge up that inner corner just a little. Okay, in with the shimmer now. Now, normally I would use glitter glue, but because I've got a matte base down, I can't do that. So I'm going to pack on the shadow onto a brush and then spray it with Fix Plus. And I'm going to be using your My Only Hope to do that, this one. Now, I don't want this to be a cut crease look or anything, so I'm just using a blending brush to pack that shade on. And I'm pretty much packing it everywhere where I've put that seven of nine shade. I love how that's turned that like a lilac-y blue. It looks so pretty. I love how transformative these shimmers are depending on what you put them over. I want to get a bit more drama on this lower lash line. So I think I'm going to pack some Cylon very close to my lower lashes. Just using a pencil brush to do that. That's definitely amped up the smokes there, which is what I wanted. Okay, so that's the look to this point. Just gonna hop off camera so that I can put something in my waterline, mascara, and a wing. And I'll be back with you to show you the finished look. Okay guys, so here's the finished look. What I've done is add a massive wing using NYX Epic Ink Liner, taken the wing from about the center of my eye and all the way out. So it's quite fat at sort of the base of my eye and I've taken it right up to my tail of my brow there and then I've gone in with a couple of side effects gel liners from Lethal Cosmetics, I've gone in with Reverb, the lilac in my waterline and then just underneath my wing here I've added a touch of blue, it's the shade Analog and what I've done is just taken a really small liner brush, really pointed one, this is the EO5 from Sigma and just traced the line there with a very steady hand. And I sometimes use that with white, never done it with a coloured liner, but I think it works really well and just pulls out some of the blue that we've got going on on the inner part of my eye here. And then just so I don't forget to tell you, I will drop all of my makeup details down in my description, but the blush I've been wearing today is this one. It's Sweet Mulberry by Cover Effects, and I've just used the glowy side. My highlight has been Moon Cruiser from Kaleidos Makeup. One of my favourites from them, it's not for the faint hearted though, it's very purple, very sparkly. And then lips have been Anastasia's Dusty Mauve. One of the best mauve tones that I own, it's one of my favourite lipsticks in my entire collection actually, because it's got that greasy purpliness about it. It's a bit more daring of a mauve shade than you normally find and it's very cool toned and just very beautiful I think and just the perfect foil for those mauvey shades that I've used in the eye look. So I'm really really happy with how this one turned out but I can't wait to, to jump into the next look because I'm going to be using the shade Gravity, the green in the palette, not used that at all yet so let's jump right into look number two. Okay guys, so it's the next day and on to look number two. As I say, 
say I'm going to be using the shade Gravity in this look. Really excited because I've not used that before. I want to use Nebula and I want to use Firefly. So we're going to be doing a very green but coral look today. That's the plan. Now normally I deepen my looks a lot so I don't want to do that today. So today we're going to be keeping things very light and almost pastel. So I'm going to start by building up that gravity in the outer and inner corners. Just packing the colour on. I think if I'd used a white base it might have popped just a little more but I've already applied the painty paint mod. It's kind of habit to do that but if you really want to get a shade like this to pop a white base would definitely do that. Now I'm going to take it fairly high up. I want this green to be pretty prominent in the look. Beautiful shade of green. I'm going to leave the centre part of my lids and my crease open and I'm pretty much taking this, as I say, quite high. I'm going to leave myself a little bit of area for blending but not too much. The tone of this green is so, so pretty. I've seen a lot of people do looks with this and with Queen of Blades, the deeper green. I just wanted to do something a little bit different with it. Keeping a very rounded shape today, we're not winging anything out. Might add a baby wing, but not sure yet. Considering this is going over the Matte Painterly Paint Pot, there's a hell of a lot of pigment in this because, as I say, normally shades that are a bit brighter and a bit more almost neon like this need a white base to show up to their potential. This is showing up really strong. That's packed on, just going to work to blend the edges a little. Now I'm going to go in with NYX Glitter Primer and I'm going to prime just in the centre part here but almost up to my brow so just sort of bringing it level with where that shadow ends. And I'm overlapping that glitter primer just slightly onto the green but not all the way across the green. Next I'm going to pick up the shade Nebula and I'm going to pack that either side but I'm going to leave myself the centre portion open. Just edging that onto the green a little bit. As I say, keeping the centre portion open because we're going to put Firefly there in a moment. Because these have got a transparent base, it allows you to layer it over a colour that isn't really a colour you would expect to put it with. So that's what we've got so far, just a flush of coral on the lids. It looks really, really pretty, I think, as you turn your head. And then for the centre, we're going to go in with Firefly. It's going right in the middle there. That's so pretty. And what I'm going to do is just work to blend these shimmers a little bit together. So I'm almost taking this Firefly over the nebula shade a little. I love how reflective that firefly shade is, that's stunning. It's going to take a bit more of Nebula, it's just going to be a little bit of backwards and forwards until I'm happy with how things have come together. And that I've got both shades still showing in the look. Okay, for the lower lash line, I want to go in with an orange liner. So I've got this one by Linda Halberg, it's called Old Hair Flash and it's orange with a bit of sparkle. So I think it'll be perfect for what we're looking to achieve here. So that's going to go in my waterline and on my lower lash line. I'm going to smudge that out as a base. So I'm taking that fairly low and then using a Linda Halberg 303, just going to smudge that out. Make a bit more, I think I want it a little bit lower. Then taking a little tiny 
backing brush here this is the Linda Harbour 301 I'm gonna pick up some of that nebula shade pack it on the brush and then spray it and we're gonna line the lower lash line with that just wanted that base down to make it more opaque because it's not completely opaque and then I want to bring things even lower so I'm going to use the shade Summers just to blend out below there pretty much filling my eye bag area with that shade coming nice and low Now I've applied that shade, I'm just going to work to blend that in. And I just wanted a light wash of orange, almost like blending into where my blush and highlight is. And then for my inner corner, I'm going to take Firefly again. Just going to pop that just into the inner corner. This is one of my favourite shades in the palette. Look how reflective and beautiful that is. And I haven't used that in many of the looks, so it's nice to give it its moment there. Okay, so that's the look to this point. Just going to hop off camera for some black liner and mascara. And I'll be back with you to show you the finished look. Okay, guys, so here's the finished look. Really happy with how it turned out. What I've done is add a wing using the NYX Epic Ink Liner. When I'm using shades that are quite bright and that I haven't used a deepening up shade, I think it just helps to ground the look if you've got some black liner. It's kind of a Debbie trademark to have a wing anyway. It just makes it feel more me. And I really like how the look turned out. When I was adding the orange underneath, that summer shade, I was wondering whether I was going to be able to pull it off and whether it would work but my vision was to kind of blend the lower lash line with what's going on on my cheeks and I think I've achieved it and I really like how it's turned out. What's on my cheeks is the Clown Blush palette from Lightly Makeup. I've used the Shake Contortion. That is a very pigmented orange and to bring it down a peg or two and make it a little bit more wearable but also add some shine. I've gone in with the Nomad Cosmetics Disco Nights Highlighter from their Studio 54 collection, which is such a beautiful highlight. It looks orange in the pan there, but it adds a gold glitziness to your cheeks and packed over that orange blush. It looks really stunning, I think. And then lips today, I've gone in with a bit of a combo. I've got Cruel from Urban Decay to line my lips and fill them in. And then over the top I've got the Lucid Lip from Kaleidos Makeup in the shade Dramatise. I always like to overline my lips a bit and wear a liner under a gloss just to make it a bit more opaque. I've got very small lips unless I do that. But really, as I say, love how both of the looks came out. You'll have to let me know which was your favourite. Did they inspire you in any way? Would you create either of them? And I really want to know, have you bought the palette or are you going to attempt to pick it up and the restock? So as I say, it's restocking on the 17th. So if you're watching this on the day it goes up, that's tomorrow. So don't sleep on it if you want it, because as I understand, there's going to be a very limited restock. Some of you have said you weren't able to get hold of the playing cards and they are restocking those as well. So if you're just looking for those, jump on there. Hopefully you can get them to complete your collection if you weren't able to pick them up before. But I wholeheartedly recommend this palette. I mean, it was sent to me in PR. I'm on Kaleidos' PR list. Very, very fortunate to be so. But they've been one of my favourite brands for a long time and way before I was on their list. And I think they're doing shadows like other people just don't really do in palettes. So this iridescent shine and glitz that's in their shimmers you find that in indie brands in singles but very rarely in a palette and that's one of the things that excites me and then the mattes in this palette in particular are jewel toned but they're so strong in pigment i mean as i say that green you don't normally get a green like this to pack such a punch without putting a white base underneath so super impressed with that there's so many different colour combos in this palette. I've only scratched the surface with the five looks that I've done. But as I say, if you've not caught the other two videos that I've done, I will link those for you. 
So I've done some very different looks from one another to try and show you the diversity of looks that you can achieve with the palette. But I hope you've enjoyed watching and if you're new to my channel I hope that you might consider subscribing before you go. But other than that guys just want to wish you a lovely day or night wherever you are and hopefully catch you in the next one. Bye guys! Mm -hmm.